How are you doing? This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave, the founder of the highest paid part time job in the world options training course. Uh, doing this particular broadcast early because I got some other things that I want to talk about. And so we kind of moved everything up on the slate. You know, anybody that worked in broadcast understands that sometimes you got to change your production slate. Sometimes you got to move stuff early. You got to move stuff back. We're going to make sure that we get it out. Right. So today is 12 to 2021. And what we're going to talk about is this particular topic of get some skills or take the deal. So everybody that is on the live stream, everybody that is missing the live stream, you can catch it. It's going to be recorded. That's the great thing about technology. So it's going to be archived. Everybody that's on, you know, hit me up in the chat. Let me know that you can hear me. Let me know where you're coming out from. And like I said, we coming out early because I moved some things up on the slate because I want to talk about a particular issue in the market that's going to be timely. So I had to move this production up to get that out. You know how it goes. Sometimes you got to kind of rearrange things and we're going to make sure we get all the content out. So what we're going to talk about is this reality that we're living in a world, right? To where this economy that we're living in is going to get tougher and tougher for people to survive in. And I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm not saying this to be an alarmist. I'm really trying to get you to understand this. And one of the, the, the advantages of being locked into this particular channel is you get a market based perspective. Right. And as a result, you get things earlier than the average person does. And we're going to kind of talk about that. Once you really get into these particular markets, you understand why uh, you start to see how things move faster than the average mainstream person talk about. So what they're going to talk about in the mainstream is these variants. Right. What we're talking about in the markets is inflation, um, economic policy, things of that nature, how those are going to affect the markets. Right. Because these are the companies that are essentially dominate the United States, not only economically, but also politically. And then there's going to be a lagging effect into the mainstream. So a lot of the issues that the mainstream American is dealing with, nobody's really going to address them until later. And we're going to kind of talk about that with economic policy. So what we're going to see in this particular world in the, in the, in the mainstream is that. A lot of people are going to be struggling to try to figure out how to survive in this new economy. Once we get into 2022, a lot of the stimulus money is is essentially spent up. It's being used. A lot of people got to go back to the lifestyle that they were living before the pandemic It's really going to start to be a reality of the kind of world that they're living in. And we're kind of already starting to see that a lot. Uh, we're starting to see that right now, but it's going to get even worse. And what we're seeing in this particular economy, and this is like I said, it's not to be an alarmist. It's not to scare you. Is every it was like every 10 years, the economy will collapse over the most part and people have to try to figure out how to build themselves up. What we saw happen in 07, 08, especially dealing with black people, but especially working class black people is because the housing market collapsed. One of the, a lot of black people lost a lot of their wealth. The one thing that they had that essentially was building wealth for them, they lost that. Many of them since 07, 08 have never recovered. Then we go into the pandemic. A lot of people, regardless of their ethnicity or color, they lost a lot of their economic stability. Right. So you're dealing with a person that took a big hit in 07, 08. They took another big hit in 2020. And it's me personally. I think that we're going to start seeing uh, downturns in the economy not every five years, as opposed to every 10 years. Before that, we was on a 10 year plan. I think now we're going to be on a five year plan. So for a lot of people, they haven't recovered from the pandemic. We should look for another economic downturn around 25, 26, and then they're not going to recover from that either. And so what's going to happen is they're going to consistently stay down. And one of the reasons is because they don't really understand. Um, it doesn't they don't really understand how to be successful in this new economy in which you've got to have specific skills to even have a chance of being arrived. And a lot of what's distracting a lot of people is social media, entertainment, things of that nature. Because that's part of their plan is to keep a lot of people distracted while they move the economy and move the society in the direction that they wanted to be in. And then what, once it becomes apparent to everybody, it's going to be too late for most people because they're not going to understand what to do. And they're just going to have to take whatever deal is being offered to them. Erica has given a really good analysis of where she thinks the economy is going for working class people. Um, and her analysis is not as dire as my analysis. My analysis is for many people, uh, what they're going to do for a lot of people, especially people that live inside these big cities, is they're going to move you outside of the city in communities. Um, and you're going to essentially live in a planned community outside of the major cities. And over time, they're going to essentially just do a war of attrition against you. And that's how they're going to get rid of you. And nobody's going to be able to see it because nobody's going to be able to figure out what's going on because you're not going to be in the main, the main cities. Right. And so as opposed to back in the day where 
uh, a lot of the poor people in the area was inside the major cities and they were very visible and everybody knew what was going on. And people have moved out of the cities. What we're seeing in a lot of the, the major cities is that people are trying to move back into the city. So what they're doing is they're pushing the poor people out. And I really believe that they're going to have planned communities outside of these particular cities. And what they're essentially going to do over time in these planned communities, they're just going to get rid of a lot of people. And, it, you know, one thing about this country is they understand how to fight wars of attrition. They're very long term wars to eliminate people. They don't happen fast because they got nothing but time. They're in control of everything. So they're not pressed for time. So if it takes them another 50 to 100 years to get rid of certain people that they want to get rid of, they're cool with that because they got nothing but time. And I really think that's what they're headed for. And one of the challenges is that a lot of people don't have the skills to survive in this new economy. And let me give you a story of what I'm talking about. So I used to live in Atlanta. A lot of people may know that. If you don't, you know that now. A lot of these people that y'all think are doing it real big because they've been on reality shows, they got real big social media followings. I know these people in real life, especially a lot of the chicks. I know them in real life. And one thing I talked about before is that many of these people are not living the lifestyle that they exhibit uh, in, on social media. Many of these people will exhibit a certain personality on social media. They own these reality shows. They're getting their hair and their makeup done. They're getting clothes donated to them. They're getting hair and makeup donated to them. They're getting services for this stuff sent to them as part of this particular narrative they're putting around the show. They don't make a lot of money to be on these shows. The only person that makes a lot of money to be in the reality shows is a person that the show's built around. If you just wanted to bit players in the show, you really don't make a lot of money. You're doing it for exposure to try to promote your situation. But many of these women don't have the game to learn how to take uh, these reality shows and parlay them into something else. They don't have the game to know how to do that. So they just on the show with a big social media follower. And one thing I observed when I was living in the A is many of these chicks, they living on people's couches. They jumping from house to house to house. They barely making it. They don't have a lot of money in their pocket because they don't have skill sets in, that are actually marketable in this real economy. They trying to get by just on how they look and the fact that they got a little bit of a fan base. And that doesn't work in this economy anymore because you're not special anymore because you got a few hundred thousand people on social media. A lot of people got that. A lot of people on YouTube got a big YouTube following and nobody outside of the YouTube following even knows who they are. They just big on YouTube. YouTube creates this reality that, you know, I got a million subs on YouTube like you a star like uh, Tom Brady or something. Nobody knows who you are outside of your million person following on YouTube. And those are just the people that click subscribe. That's not really your core following. But YouTube would give you this impression that these people are big time stars. They're not on the same level of a LeBron James or a Tom Brady. This is it's levels to stardom in this world. But what social media has done was taking people that's not even B-list people. They've taken D and E and F and G-list people, but because they're very big in their niche, made it seem like they're very big stars. But many of these people don't know how to monetize their audience in a real way. So what happens is you observe a lot of these people are not living the lifestyle that they present on social media which is why they do a lot of things to make money because they really not making any money by having big social media thing. And I observed that I knew a chick. She was barely making it. She was living on the fringes, but she had been on reality shows, shows that, you know, I would tell you about the name of the show. You'd be like, Oh yeah, I remember that show. Right. You may have seen her on certain shows, shows with people that got names in certain sectors. Right. What she ended up doing was having a kid from this dude that had already like five kids, but he was making a lot of money in music. Without her understanding is that because the way child support works, they only gonna, going to take a certain percentage of that guy's salary for child support. So they're only going to take a total, a certain percentage of his total salary for child support. The more children he has, the less money every mother gets. So having been baby mother number six to a guy that already got five kids, there's no money in that. Why? Because the money's already being split amongst the first five children. But when you don't have no game about yourself, you don't understand that. But she's still trying to do the social media thing to where I'm trying to parlay social media attention into something that's actually going to make me some money. Why? Because she don't have any skills. Right. So we're in an era now where you're going to see a lot of people right fall publicly because they have a social media narrative around them. But in reality, right, it's not real. And one of the things you got to understand is that this particular screenshot I got, this is a person, this is a young woman. That's really, really big on social media. Right. And unfortunately for her, she's fighting with people over where to stay. But on social media, it looks like everything is really well put together. Right. And that's the real world that we're getting ready to go into. 
a lot of people, male and female, are going to have to take deals just to maintain a basic living situation. Why? Because they don't have any skills. And let's go into some of the reasons why they don't have any skills. And these are the kind of things that they're not talking about on mainstream television. Because like I said, is that the mainstream is going to be late to everything because we really focus on the markets here. We study a lot of times what's going on from a macroeconomic standpoint and how that's going to filter into the regular economy. But I want to tell you, and everybody's going to ask me, what's the solution? So let me give you the solution. You need to get skilled in this new economy or you're going to pay the price. Whatever that skill set is, if you don't do what I'm promoting, you need to figure out. You know, Erica got a lot of people on her platform of all different walks of life that can help you get a skill set. You got to get skilled just sitting on social media and looking at what somebody else is doing and being a fan of somebody else. That's not a skill set. you got to get skilled in this new economy because we're going to talk about the cost of things are going to become a lot more expensive. And even when they offer uh, economic tools to solve some of these problems, it's going to be a lag between the tool and it reaching the mainstream. So you're going to have to deal with whatever you got to deal with until you get to that particular point. Let's go ahead and get into it. So let me go ahead and share my screen out real quick. Let's get these slides out of here because we're not going to be here long with this one. So first one, right? We're talking about rent prices. So rent prices are sown in America, right? As Americans flock to get back to the cities, right? And so what we want to show here is nationwide rent prices are up 7.5% this year, three times higher than normal. Okay. So then the question is, is the, is the increase in income comparable to the rise in rent price? Where I left, the city I left out of in Florida, the real estate values are just sky high. It's ridiculous, right? Places that they was trying to charge to make people live in, these places in, in, in Florida, man, you got to shoot your way in and shoot your way out to get up in there. And they're charging an the arm and a leg. Why? Because it's that much demand. Because what do we see happen? There was a lot of you know rent concessions because of the pandemic. Now that we're out of that, they're no longer always offering some of those same concessions. They're raising the rates on the rent. And, it's, and, it's, and this is something that Katrina says she's 100 percent correct. It's not going to go down. Right. It's not going to go down. They're not going to they're not going to lower these rents for people. It's going to be a very long time before they feel like, you know, what, there's a surplus of housing inventory. Right. Right now we're in a seller's market. And so normally what you see is as housing goes up, rents usually start to follow that. And what we're also going to see is that it's going to be more expensive for somebody to buy a house, but it's also going to be more expensive for them to rent. This is why you got to get some type of skills. You can't put your head in the sand and think this is going to go away because it's going to be much more and more difficult. And what I think you're going to see is a lot more communal living. I think you people are finally going to be forced to in America. This is something that a lot of immigrants do. They're finally going to be forced to start living with either members of their family or living with other people. Right. Uh, we're going to see this where, you know, everybody's going to have a room in a house and they all just going to pay the rent. Some people call it house hacking, but I think that's going to be reality as opposed to one or two people living in the whole situation by themselves. Why? Because they're not going to be able to afford to live anywhere. If you want to live somewhere decent with a, that's not a high crime area, you're going to have to figure out another way outside of what we've been programmed to do. Because for so many, for so long, it benefited the real estate industry to have everybody in their own place. That's how they made more money. The problem is that's no longer going to be sustainable. So what you see a lot of immigrants do is they come over here, they'll put six people in one house. They'll literally put four or five people in one apartment. That's how they pay the bills because that's how they live where they're from. You go to other parts of the world, you don't have one person in an apartment all by themselves. In a big, you got one person in a two bedroom apartment all by themselves, or one person in the big old house. The whole family live inside there. Everybody, grandma, grandfather, aunts, uncles, the whole family live in there. Everybody help out on bills. And so long in America, we was told that's not the way to do things. I know chicks that tell dudes, I don't want a day to do, they got roommates. Right. But everybody's getting ready to have a roommate in the future. Right. So this is going to be very normal for somebody to have somebody else that they living with to try to help out on bills. Why? Because everything's going to be too expensive. OK, so that's the first thing we expect. Seven point five percent. And I doubt that's going to continue to go down. And the question is, is incomes going to go up to match that or are people going to just have to try to figure out? And also, what are they telling a lot of people when you rent? We don't want your rent to be more than one third of your income. Well, how does that work if the rent keeps going up, but the income's not going up? But a lot of landlords will tell the person, we don't want your rent to be more than one third of your income because we feel like you're not going to be able to pay it. But how does that work if the rent keeps going up, but the income don't going up? And these are the questions people got asking. But like I said, this is not a mainstream channel. 
So these are why we're going into these particular questions. And then, like I said, if you miss the solution, we're going to give the solution again. You need to get skilled in this new economy. You got to get skilled, right? Or you're going to pay the price. And nobody's going to come save you. No politician's going to come save you. No spiritual leader's going to come save you. You got to get skilled or you're going to pay the price. Because what they're getting ready to do is where, like I said, we're in an era now where I think they're going to essentially shrink the economy, shrink the economy every five years as opposed to every 10 years. And a lot of people still not have gotten back on their feet from 07, 08. A lot of people trying to get back on their feet from what happened in 2020. Right. And then we're going to go into 25, 26. Many of these people will not have gotten back on their feet and they're going to slam this economy back back down again. Right. Because they're running this thing on a cycle. This is how they make money. Because essentially what they're doing is they just rinsing, they're just flushing their assets back around. Right. We push the economy back up. We dump it. We buy everything again cheap. We ride it back up again. We dump it. We drive it. And that's just what they're going to keep doing. Right. Until that doesn't work anymore. They got to do something else. Because if you really noticed it, and this is for all my people that was trading during the pandemic. Once people thought, right, that the U.S. economy was going to suffer because of the pandemic. We saw millions of dollars start leaving the market very, very fast to the point where they had to stop the market. That shows you that a lot of people really don't have confidence in this market. And that's going to miss a lot of people. Right. Because a lot of people, the average American didn't witness this. I witnessed, right, the S&P selling off every day to the point to where they literally had to stop the stock market and say, we're not going to let you do any stock market activity. And I didn't even know they could do that, but I found out that they can do that. Right. It's called a circuit breaker. Well, why do they have to do that? Because they was pulling all the money out of the market because they didn't have any confidence in this particular economy. Right. So to to keep the confidence, they had to one say you can't pull your money out of the market, which I didn't know they could do, but they can. Then three, they had to come in with liquidity to help people get their confidence back into this particular market. So the the the, the top people in this particular economy that are traders, hedge funds, people. They know that we're in a very precarious situation from an economic standpoint, right? And they're prepared for it. So they know that this situation is, is really what's spinning a whole bunch of plates. It's a very precarious situation. The average American doesn't even understand that this type of stuff goes on because they worried about, you know, this, that, and the third that they're being programmed to by these particular news outlets. But this is really what's going on behind the scenes. Now, let's go into... Um, current U.S. inflation, because I want to show you this, right? And today, Yellen just said that they're going to stop using the word transitory for inflation, right? So understand the language that they're going to stop using. They're going to stop using the word transitory, which means it's no longer transitory. So we got inflation, United States inflation rates, 2011 to 2012. What are we seeing? A big spike, right? 2.3 in 2019, 1.4 in 2020 is now at 6.2, right? 6.2 inflation rate. And that's conservative, in my opinion. Uh, we, we, we On the last video, we talked about what the CPI number was. So the annual inflation rate for the United States is 6.2 for the 12 months into 2021, the highest since November 1990, and after rising 5.4 previously. Okay? So the inflation rate is going up. They're not telling you that we no longer are going to use the term transitory in regards to inflation. So now inflation is a real thing. The question is now how do we address this particular issue? OK, now what I want to show you is something else. Like I said, we ain't going to be here long because we've talked about this a lot. So we're not really putting no new information on the table. It's just you just got to decide what you're going to do with the information. So what is the core information rate? This is what I want you to understand and how this particular number is calculated, because we start talking about market baskets. We kind of always want to know what's in the basket. Right. One of the things that they do and we talked about the core inflation rate for October 2021 was four point six. That means the prices of everything except food and energy have risen by 4.6% since October 2021. The core rate excludes food and energy prices because they vary too much from month to month. Now, why do they exclude food and energy? Because they're commodities. So they, tr they trade food and energy. We know we trade wheat. We trade, uh, uh, you know, we trade wheat. We trade corn. We trade coffee. I think we trade sugar. We trade these as commodities. We know we trade oil as a commodity. So as a result, because these are traded as commodities, they don't include us in inflation. But what do we understand in real life? As a, as a consumer, two of your biggest costs are going to be what? Food and energy. Your other biggest costs are going to be lodging. But two of your biggest costs are going to be food and energy. Why? Because 
If food goes up, it costs you more money to eat. If the price of gas goes up, it costs you more money to eat. Why? Because it costs more to get the food to you. So one thing we know, and I tell people, you know, you start to understand how the market works. You see the gas price going up, you should expect food to go up. If we see the gas price go up and it stays up, the gas price stays elevated, in the next two weeks, we should expect food to go up. This is why Biden said that he was going to release the strategic reserve. Then he also wants OPEC to increase production because he doesn't want gas price to go up. Because if gas price goes up, food is going to go up. And we already got inflation. So people got to understand is that they don't include energy and food in the core inflation rate, even though those are two things that are definitely in fact affected by inflation. Because what? You got to eat and you got to use gas to travel and your food is brought to you using gas. Most of your food is brought to you using some type of freight, some type of truck. So if that price goes up, your food cost goes up. Right. Which means that you now have less money to spend on other things because of food. Your next biggest cost is probably going to be your housing. So you got to understand is that there are omitting certain things for you to really get the true understanding of inflation. But if you go to the store, you can see in the store it's costing me more to buy the same amount of food it cost me to buy six months ago. You feel me? The question is, is your is your income going up in comparison to what you're paying for food? So most people don't track their food budget. I do. I track my food budget. How much did I pay for food this month? And you want to see, is this, are you eating a pretty much the same amount of food, but you find out that your food budget is starting to go up? Then, for all my traders that understand this, if the cost of food, the cost of inflation, the cost of gas goes up, that can affect restaurants. Why? Because they now got to raise their prices, which now can mean that they lose some of their clientele or their customer substitute to go to another uh, food place. This is one of the reasons why I don't eat out. Why don't I eat out? Because food costs have gone up so much over the past 10, 15, 20 years that to keep serving food at that lower price, what do they do? They cheapen the ingredients. That's why fast food don't taste the way it tasted 20 years ago. It tastes terrible now because the ingredients now are so cheap because of the cost of food. That the food not just tastes terrible. I don't know how people eat out. I'm not disrespecting people that eat out, but I don't eat out because this food don't taste the way it used to taste 20 years ago because they cheapen the ingredients so much because they they still trying to you know keep give you a dollar menu. They still trying to give you a value menu, but the problem is all their costs have gone up. So what have they done? They cheapen their ingredients because the cost of business goes up every year. So what do we do? We get cheaper ingredients, right? And so that's one of the reasons why I don't eat out like I used to. When I was a youngster growing up, I used to eat out all the time. But I noticed over time, food the food starts to taste different. I had a Pizza Hut pizza years ago. Pizza tasted terrible. Had another pizza from Domino's. Pizza tasted terrible. When I was a youngster, these pizzas were actually decent pizzas. But they've changed their cost. If you eat a Pizza Hut pizza, no disrespect to their corporation, they do what they do. That cheese don't even taste right. Because they're using the cheapest cheese they can get. They're using the cheapest tomato paste they can get. They're using the cheapest dough they can get. They're using everything is super, super cheap. Why? Because we got to try to figure out how to offset inflation and rising food costs to keep selling this particular pan pizza to you at a certain price because we can't jump the price of the pan pizza by 30% else nobody going to come up in here. So that's what you got to understand, you know, for my traders to understand that this particular price is on food and keep going up. It's going to have an effect on these particular quick serve establishments just trying to serve an audience that don't want to pay a lot of money for food. OK, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Like I say, we ain't going to be here long. The next one is do 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 inflation is way but is wiping out uh, wage increases. So this is what we want to talk about. Income is up, but prices are eating into those gains. OK, uh, hourly earnings are up five percent on the year. But inflation is wiping out those gains when adjusted for the cost of rising prices. The earnings are really down 1% on the year. And you can see this. So these are the earnings, right? This is adjusted for inflation. So what do we end up with? Negative 1.1%, but 5.1%, right? So the problem is that it, 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 you get what we've done now because you know so many people decided to not work because of the pandemic. They had to raise wages to get people on the job. The problem is, is uh, inflation is going up. So even though you're making more money to work now, it costs more to live. So it's being offset by the amount more money you're making. Another thing that we got to talk about, and this is what I want people to understand. When they finally figure out what they're going to do about this inflation, the Federal Reserve is going to create tools to try to solve it. 
we're going to know about it early on these type of platforms why because we talk about the markets all day here right we actually sit down and watch jerome powell and yellen talk and we we watch them what they're talking about we understand what they're saying we understand how inflation and supply chain issues affect earnings on particular companies right because we we tapped into that type of information here the average nine to five working american doesn't understand that even though once the federal reserve creates tools or quote unquote try to solve this problem there's going to be a lag to when those particular tools start to affect the overall economy so if you already are struggling to make it now right and let's say in three months jerome Powell says okay we're going to address this situation and they start creating tools to address the situation right there can be a lag to it actually affecting your day-to-day -day life until maybe the summertime so you still got to deal with this stuff right and this is what the average american doesn't understand because everything is more important than this they don't want you focusing on this kind of information because you might finally go to your politician and say what you're going to do about this right so they keep you distracted from this while they do this type of stuff and they deal with this they're going to keep you distracted with everything else but this is a real life situation so we're going into a new era where there's high inflation full costs are going to keep going up uh biden gonna do whatever he got to try to do to make sure gas doesn't spike up too much because that'll really offset this whole economy if gas really starts to go up because that didn't that would definitely raise food costs because that's how you get your food wages are not going to keep going up they're going to hit a, a a top on wages and the average american is going to get crushed in the middle and no politician is going to solve this problem you got to figure out how to solve this problem on your own and the entertainers do not have a solution to your problem right very few youtubers are talking about this type of stuff with solutions to the problem we just don't talk about it we actually have solutions politicians are not going to create a solution to your problem because they good they got their money coming in right and they're going to be all right but the average american is going to get crushed in the middle of this and so this is what i want people to understand you got to get some skills and you got to learn how to pay the bills you got to get some skills or you're going to have to take whatever deal that somebody's offering you so if you're a chick and you got to live with some dude just to pay your bills you got to take that if you want to do the independent thing that's cool you got to work wherever you need to work to pay your bills so if you like that one woman that i did a video about about six months ago when she was trying to go into management at that particular quick sale restaurant and that dude was talking to her like she was stupid but she had to deal with that because she wanted to go into management because she don't have nobody looking out for her do what you got to do right if you a dude and you got to live with somebody that you may not necessarily like but you can't pay your bills because you don't have the skills to make enough money. You got to just do what you got to do because that's the world we're getting ready to go into. And this is going to hurt people that really don't have strong families. It's going to hurt people that don't know how to go build good relationships with other people because it's going to be very difficult in this new economy to do everything by yourself. Right. These relationships that a lot of people have that are not real, they're very transitory. They're not going to make it through this new economy everybody trying to be this independent autonomous unit and i don't depend on nobody else i don't deal with nobody else i got it all on my own that's not gonna work in this new economy those people gonna be crying for help and ain't nobody gonna come help them because that's where they're pushing this economy right so that's what we really much want to talk about on this particular course let me look at something real quick because we got 88 people on the chat so we got 51 likes so is it possible can we get about 30 something more likes if possible to get them likes up but that's what we're dealing with in this particular real economy. So here's what we're getting ready to offer you. If you're one of these people you talked about, you tired of having a cap on your income, or we talked about before, Jerome Powell and Yellen, they're going to solve this inflation problem when they get around to it, right? They're not going to solve it on your schedule. They're going to solve it on their schedule, okay? If you have an issue with the fact that you're not bringing in enough money, if you have an issue with the fact that to make the money you got to make, you got to take all the time away from your family, we believe we have a solution to you. It's called www the high to pay dot online what we do is we figured out how to solve some of these problems via options trading right and we've been successful in this particular area and we have a track record of success for people that want to apply themselves and put the work in if you don't like to read if this type of conversation about the economy is boring to you it's probably not going to be the space for you right because we're heavily in these markets we're not just watching youtube videos and people talking about tickers and hyping up tickers and meme stock plays into the moon all day that's not really how we get down over here but if you want a solution to these particular problems, we've been able to figure out how to create a solution for some of these problems. And the people that apply themselves in this particular area are successful, right? So that's a particular website. We still have in the Black Friday sale. But even if you don't 
take me up on my offers. I want to encourage you to do something about the situation. Nobody's coming to save you. Right. And in fact, the fact that you're going to be non-competitive in this space is going to make it easier on that family. Right. And I think a lot of us don't understand this. The more people that we can make non-competitive in this economy, the easier it's going to be on a lot of other people. They don't have a desire to develop people to make them more competitive. I do. But they don't. That's not their vision of the world. Their vision of the world is trying to make as many non-competitive people as possible, not to make as many competitive people as possible because they believe that a rising tide is going to raise all the boats. A lot of these people don't believe in that. They'll rather float in, in zero for the water, but as long as they got the only person that got a boat, they cool with that. That's how these people think. Okay? You really got to understand the psychology of the people that you're dealing with. So nobody's going to come save you. In fact, they're trying to make you a non-competitive group of people. And they will program you to make you believe you're really competitive and you really got it going on. But in reality, you don't. In reality, you don't. And all the economic data is telling you that. We've gone over the BLS data before. That's telling you that you don't have the amount of money that you think you have. You can lie on this Internet, but you're really not making the kind of money that you think you're making. OK, and I'm here to tell you, if you could get around me long enough, I would show you that the kind of money that you think is money is not no real money. Not in this economy. It's not. We don't live in a country in Africa where people are making two hundred dollars a year. We don't live in one of these you know, Caribbean countries where people is barely making three hundred dollars a year. We live in a country that's going to start spitting out millionaires like that. Right. So if the cap on your income is forty, fifty thousand dollars, you got to ask yourself, how come you in the richest country in the history of the world and you only be able to figure out how to make forty five, fifty thousand dollars a year? And a lot of times that's irregardless of your formalized education. A lot of people formalized education just can't figure out how to get over the fifty thousand dollar mark. Right. So we're not having these particular type of conversations. So that's why on this platform, we don't do a whole lot of laughing, joking and tripping. We are not doing a whole lot of gossip stuff. What you will not be able to say tapped into this platform is nobody did tell you where this game was going because this is where this thing is going. And we have solutions. We're not just trying to do scared in business. We actually have solutions. If I could, can we get them likes up? I appreciate getting them likes up. All I got to do is click the little like button and you know what I'm saying and you're good to go. So we got any questions before we get up on out of here, man, because like I said, I'm going to get ready to roll into this next video. But see, Mr. Clutch, this is what I want you to understand. I don't see it. I don't see it dying down as long as somebody thinks creating that content is the only way for them to be profitable. Because this is what I want you to understand. Most of these people are latching onto this content, not because they really got a problem with men and women, because I'm here to tell you. I leave my house, I move around, I do what I do. I live in different parts of the country, but primarily the southeast. When I'm moving around, I don't have women talking to me like they stupid. I don't have men talking to me like they stupid. Right. Because I don't come across as I'm the person that you're going to point your anxiety and angst on. What people do, and this is a real this is like a part of dark persuasion, but it's really a part of uh, psychology. That's why if you get a chance, you can read a book called The Crowd. It's on Amazon for like nine dollars to fifteen dollars. In my opinion, people are frustrated. They're upset because of these economic conditions. What they do is say, you know what? Here's what you can point your frustration and upsetness about. Like you, here's a place to direct it at. It almost becomes like a prism. And what they do is they focus all that frustration and, and anxiety on this particular topic. And then now this becomes where I can go online and, and point my frustration and my anxiety. And I think people are only going to get more frustrated and, and have more anxiety as we continue to progress in this economy. So as long as somebody says, you know what, I can be profitable by creating this kind of content, they're going to create creating this kind of content. Because my question is, why would anybody create this content in the first place? Like I've been broke before with no money and I never would have said, you know what? Let me go on the Internet and create content talking about black women like they just don't make sense to me. All right. Like I, that don't make sense. But what I would do to make money wouldn't make sense to them. So it's just we just different type of people. You feel me? So, but this stuff will always exist because many of these people are upset about their life. They're upset about things not going the way they want it to go. And now I have a figure to point my upsetness about because I tripped out when I seen uh, after that George Floyd situation, all those people riding in Atlanta. And I'm like, 
y'all being gentrified out of the city, the way Atlanta's moving, if you're a working class black person, you're not going to be able to afford to live inside the city. They're gentrifying everybody out of the city that can't, that's probably not going to make over $100,000 a year. And that wasn't, that y'all didn't ride over that. What y'all rioted over was George Floyd being killed up in Minnesota. No disrespect to his family, but that's a long way from Atlanta, Georgia. But what happened was they took their anger and their frustration and they pointed it at that particular topic. And one of the things that we're not successful at doing is taking people's anger and frustration and pointing at something that's going to provide a solution to them. They just keep them frustrated and angry because one is beneficial to them or, you know, I want to use the point of that this particular issue because it's beneficial to me. But I'm here to tell you, and my most of these people don't have no problem with nobody. It's just on the Internet because the way people talk to me on this Internet, they, they wouldn't talk to me like that in real life because they don't have no issue like that. It's just it's escapism. Right. So I believe it's going to get even worse. Because you're going to have more people that are going to be even more upset over the fact that I can barely pay my bills, right? Or I can barely have somewhere to stay. Or I got to stay with this person I really don't like them. Or my uh, my mating prospects are not what I anticipated them being at this particular time in my life. Now, here's this person on the internet telling them, here's the reason why you're mad about everything. It's this woman or it's this man or yada, yada, yada. That you read you mad because you broke, you don't have no money, you can't do what you want to do in life, right? You're not living the life that you want to live. But these people are really gifted at personifying or creating what I call uh an avatar around a lot of people's anxiety and angst. And that's essentially that's all politicians do, they do the same thing, in my opinion. But I appreciate your content, right? Yeah, definitely, and I, and I feel you. You know, there's a lot of really good content on this YouTube, but people are because most people don't really want to solve their problem because they don't want to do the work it's going to take to solve their problem and they don't want to own their problem. Right. And we're going to talk about that on Saturday. We're going to really get into that. That's why I'm not doing that's why because I was going to do this video on Saturday, but I moved it up because we're going to talk about something on Saturday, because what I don't do is I don't play the people's mediocrity. Right. We're not going to excuse it because I don't want you to excuse mine. We got to hold each other to a standard of performance, each other. To, that's going to raise everybody up. I'm, and I don't I'm not talking about this black excellence platitude. I'm not going I'm not going to play to your mediocrity. I don't care how much money I know marketing better than most of these people that's on the Internet. If I wanted to play the black neurosis and black mediocrity, I could be a millionaire YouTuber. Right. Because I understand I understand marketing better than a lot of these people. I'm just not going to do that. I'm not going to make my money that way. That's what they do. They can do that. It's cool. I'm, I'm cool with it. So we're not doing that. And I'm going to kind of talk about that Saturday. But there's a lot of money made on this YouTube by playing the people's mediocrity, uh, playing to their lack of desire to be competitive in a competitive environment called America, playing to their, their lack of desire to be successful and to tell them that everybody else is the reason why you feel the way you do as opposed to you being the reason. There's a lot of money in that. So, I mean, it's big money in it. People got million dollar uh, channels doing that. They got million sub channels doing that. They got 500,000, 500,000 person subs doing that type of content because why? That's where the majority of people are at. That's the scale. The scale's not in talking about the markets. There's no scale in that. That's why people that got degrees in this stuff don't talk about it because there's no scale in it. Right? Because I've been saying this for years and I'm going to talk about this on Saturday. Most black people don't want no money. They're lying on the internet. Right? I've been outside in real life. If you're a black person and you about money, you're going to be by yourself a lot. Most black people don't want no money. They want just as much. They want what these white people will give them. And they cool with that. They'll deal with whatever they can get from these Anglo-Saxons. Anything past that, they don't really want no money. I don't care what they, they don't really want no money. Not like that. They don't want money. We don't want money. I'm 100% convinced we don't want no money. The majority of us don't. So if you're a black person, you really about having money, you could be by yourself a lot. Because most black people don't want no money. They cool, whatever they can get. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I blame both of them, GC. I blame the people that's creating it and I blame the people that's feeding into it. Right. But, you know, it is what it is. But there's a market for it. You know, there was a guy years ago. He got arrested. He got sent to the Fed. He got sent to the Fed in Florida. And he used to do really like over the top pornographic content. Right. Y'all might know who he is. He used to do really over the top pornographic content. And they asked the man, 
well, why you produce this type of content? He said there's a market for it. There's people that want to see this really over the top pornographic content. And he got caught up because he, they sent a tape to somebody in a certain market of the country and he violated federal obscenity laws and they locked him up. He had to do jail time. Excuse me. But there's a market for this because the scale of this world is playing to people's mediocrity. That's how the world is built. The world wouldn't look the way it looked, in my opinion, if most people really wanted something in life. Most people are willing to accept what somebody's giving them. And as long as you can make them comfortable in that, they're going to ride with it. That's why I said most black people don't want no money. Because if I lived in other parts of the world and I'm kicking back and I'm like, well, these this group of dudes, because they got mineral contracts. Is drawing and I, I posted that link on my on my community page, they bring it in billions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars a year through, through you know, resource extraction contracts. And we sitting here scraping and scrounging to just to make it. Some got to get done about that because I'm not with that. But that's me. Everybody don't think like me. The average person in Africa, they just they go to church. They got social media. They can have sex. They got food and they'll just get by. I, that, they got to come on some of that bread in my mind. But that's how I think. Y'all got to come on some of that money. Y'all getting too much money over there and y'all not breaking it down to us. And we just supposed to sit back and not have nothing. Y'all got to come off that. And so that's why I don't go to Africa because I know how my mind works. I'm not going to sit over there and just act like that's gravy. But that's me. That's not the majority of the people. And I've had to accept that. That I don't think like the average person, black or white. I think like how I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the, the, the BLS data doesn't support that. But everybody's a six-figure earn on the internet. And like I said, I've known chicks in Atlanta that got that whole social media profile. And they're sleeping on people's couches. They hair and makeup look good. They got nice bodies, right? They got nice bodies. They look good on the internet, but they sleeping on people's couches. They flat, right? They ain't got no money. They don't have no savings. They doing bad. And I'm not down to nobody for doing bad. I've had economic downturns in my life, but I, I never sat down there with that. I said, okay, this doesn't happen. How I get back on my feet, but that's me. And I didn't expect nobody else, a man or a woman to put me back on my feet. Right. I just needed the opportunity to get back on my feet. I get back up because I'm, I'm like I said, I'm going to just hustle. Yeah, but that's the thing, Clutch. Real life is real life. You know what I'm saying? So when I'm moving around and running my errands and doing what I got to do, I don't have people talking to me like I'm stupid. I just have people real aggressive with me on the Internet. And I'm like, well, I don't I don't that's why I don't buy into it and I don't engage in it because it's not real to me. You know what I'm saying? It's internet stuff. I'm not doing the the uh metaverse with y'all. Like in you know, in this YouTube metaverse, these people is gangsters and they gang bangers and they they killers and they alphas and all they not that in real life. I know that and they know that, so I don't entertain it. But if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. That's their marketing and cool, I'm cool with it. But I'm not gonna participate in that. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the thing is that. I know another brother where he told me most black women don't like him, right? I think he tripping, but that's his personal opinion. But black women in real life ain't, ain't, ain't uh, dissing this dude. He worked with black women in real life. But on the internet, it's a, and like I said, if you really study a lot of these people in this black space, Mr. Clutch, ask yourself, really look at these people. Do you think they really were successful at anything except doing YouTube? You know what I'm saying? Something my grandfather told me years ago. God rest his soul. He passed away. He would talk about certain professional athletes. And he would say that was the only way they was going to make that money. So let's look at O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson became a millionaire of football. What the hell else was O.J. Simpson going to do besides play football to make millions of dollars? That was what he was going to be able to do to make millions of dollars. There's other people where. They can be successful in a lot of different lanes because they they just that talented. They that intelligent. A lot of these people on YouTube, no disrespect to them, but the only way they ever was going to make some money was off YouTube. You feel me? So have at it. So they now have to keep staying in this lane because they're not going to be able to say, well, you know what? I could take this and go start a business. This is all they're going to be able to do. So they got to keep coming back to it, even when a lot of their fame fall off. You see, they don't quit and be like, man, I'm just going to go do real estate. What else are they going to do? Then the other part is they addicted to the attention because they never got this much attention in their life. 
imagine being a nobody in, re in the real world. Nobody caring about you. You never really being that guy or that girl. And then now you can jump on YouTube and you got 10,000 people on the live stream. Or you got 3,000 people on the live stream. Or you got a sub count of five. You know, that can be really a boost to your ego and make you feel important. Because in the real world, nobody knows who the hell you are. And I can tell that's what's going on with a lot of these people. Just by the way they carry themselves. Nobody don't give a damn about these folks in the real world. They big on YouTube, though. And that's I'm cool with that because the Internet's created these opportunities for these people. I'm not mad at them. Get their money. But I know what's going on, man, because, it, it, you know, it just it is what it is. Definitely crime about to go through the roof. I think Erica's doing a show, I think, later this month on uh, the, the national crime statistics are going down. But there's certain markets that are going up. Uh, I'm going to see maybe can I jump on that show if it's if possible to talk about that, because it's definitely going to get worse, especially in certain markets. Crime about to get real stupid. And they're doing that because they want to keep pushing the gentrification in certain markets. So they need crime to go up to get everybody out of there. Right. They need crime to go up to make it in like really to make the situation unlivable so we can come in really, really cheap, buy it all up. Right. And raise the real estate value. But they got to make the place into a shooting gallery. And that's what they're getting ready to do. Yeah, I believe you. I believe you, Jayway. I, I talked about before a lot of people moving to like Lancaster, places like that, uh, because they can't afford to live in L.A. And, you know, I, I was a dude told me to move to California. I was like, I don't know how you, how you even afford to live in California. The cost of living out there, you got to be crazy. He's like, you're going to make more money. But I was like, if I don't make more money, I'm going to fall flat. You know, because the cost of living there is just when I look at what people are paying for housing in Cali. You know, to me, I don't know how you live out there if you're not clearing ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month. I don't know how you do it. I don't even understand how you do it if you're not making ten to fifteen grand a month. I mean, profit. I don't know how you live in California and live in a halfway decent place. And I want to live in a bad area. I moved to Miami. And I wouldn't even have to move across the country. Facts. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate it, Joe Cool. Yeah, but that's them. You know, if you never got the attention, the attention's valuable to you. You know, I said one thing I said about a lot of these dudes, I wish they I wish that they had dealt with enough really good looking women as, as when they was younger so they could realize that a good looking woman ain't really all that. End of the day, it's a woman. In their mind, these women are more valuable. Because in their mind, it's a rarity to them. But in reality, there is no rarity to them. But they've never dealt with it to know that a woman, regardless of how she look, is still a woman. They don't know that. So they weren't about chicks because of how they look. And you just make it. They really make it too much of it. And a lot of times that's psychological. You build it up in your mind to be something that is really not. Yeah, definitely. But like Miss Miller, I told most black people don't want no money. I learned that in the 90s. They don't really want money. Right. So we live in a country to where there's very few places in the world where it's going to be easier for you to become economically successful than the United States of America. There's a lot of distractions here, but there's so much liquidity in this particular economy. Right. Other parts of the world, the economy really is not liquid. It's hard to get money. We talked about in Africa where you got a core group of people. They're keeping all the money compressed between them. Now, you get brothers like Tone talks. He talks about uh, wealth accumulation and wealth calcification. He's 100 percent correct. But the wealth calcification in the United States is not even close to what you see in Africa. In Africa, if you're not born rich, the, the ability for you to become successful is almost zero. Unless you can figure out and this is why, you, you know, take over the country or something of that nature. That's the only way you're going to really get some money. It's almost impossible for you to work your way. Same thing as in places in Central and South America because of the way in which they've locked capital amongst like 10 people. Most black people, irregardless of that, don't want no money. Right? They just don't want it. They cool without having it. Right? They cool with doing without. And that's really how the, the majority of the world conducts themselves. Right? They'll figure out a way to go without stuff because they don't want to compete for it. Now, people can argue that we shouldn't be competing for this stuff. That's an argument. But as of right now that you got to compete for it, you got to produce people that's willing to go compete for it.
Are you just not going to get it? You got to go without. And then you normalize going without. You start creating religious narratives about why you don't have certain basic things, you know. But I know most black people don't want no money. In fact, most black people, they want the person they like to have the money, even though they don't want the money. That's why we don't have groups of people with money. This is my opinion. So most of our people, if I like somebody and I exalt them, I'm cool with them having money, but I don't I don't care if I don't have nothing as opposed to why don't we make it so 100 people is doing better as opposed to one person out of 100 having an extreme amount of wealth. But we don't really understand those type of economic policies, right, as opposed to having one person having billions of dollars or hundreds of millions of dollars. Why don't we say, well, let's get a thousand people to all make one hundred thousand dollars a year. That's better for the overall group. But the hundred thousand people got to want up the thousand people got to want to make a hundred grand a year. And they got to be willing to do what it's going to take to make it as opposed to where I'm a fan of this one person. And I'm cool that they make a lot of money, but I don't make nothing. But as long as I'm a fan of them, I'm trying to live through them. We also do a lot of voyeurism and a lot of vicarious living through other people. And you can't do that because that's their life is not your life. Um, I could be the biggest fan in the world of Jay-Z. That's his money, not my money. Right. That's his money. It's not my money. That's his. That money gonna go to his family. I gotta go make my own money. Yeah, me neither. But to me, what I said years ago, Ray Gunn, is that there's not a black version of like 4chan and stuff like that. And to me, YouTube turned into that for black, for black, especially for black males. It turned into a black version of 4chan and 8chan and all those type of weird little cubby holes that people went into. Right. And then they all got in here and they got into a continuity. Like I said, these are dudes that if I was to see them in real life, would say zero to me. They would say zero, right, to me. If they saw me in real life, zero. But on the internet, it's this, that, and the third. And some of these dudes should go and join the police force and figure out how do we become an investigative detector because that's really where their calling is. But they're spending their time doxing people. And you're doing it for free. Go into the force, get you a pension, get you some medical benefits, and become an investigative detective and get you a career if you like to research people's lives and get you some, you know what I'm saying, instead of doing it on YouTube so you can get 3,000 people to like your video, like this stuff. But like I said, this is where they at, right? Instead of trying to figure out how to be productive in their skill set, I'm just trying to get internet fame because I never got attention in my life. Nobody ever really was, uh, you know, I was never popular. I was never famous, yada, yada, yada. So now I'm running on the YouTube to try to do that. It's cool. Do what you got to do. Definitely. Because Geechee Dan, if you go back long enough, I, it's a guy out here, uh, peace to uh, Gregory Shavers today, his birthday. And I was talking to him about uh, if you go back far enough, Detroit at one time was almost like a New York. It was almost like New York City. So back right after the war, when you started having a lot of that government policy to increase uh, a lot of programs for for better for veterans, who primarily was was white men, because my. Uh, Grandfathers and grandmother, they get they didn't get access to any of those GI bills even they was World War II veterans. They started creating a lot of programs for essentially white veterans to have upward mobility in their society. Detroit, because of the housing, not the housing market, but the auto industry, was almost like New York City. And Detroit pretty much was a white city. So was Flint. Flint is a suburb of Detroit. Over time, white people started moving out, black people started to move in. You 100 percent right. They trying to clear all that area out. I know a guy from Detroit. I told him that when they redo Detroit, Detroit is going to go back to being a white city. Because that's what Detroit was 50, 60 years ago. It was a white city. It wasn't a black city. By the time they started letting black people into Detroit, Detroit economically was already declining. Right? Because, you know, organized labor is one of the reasons why that auto industry was so strong. And they kind of got beat down really late 60s early 70s but you didn't really see the effect of that till late the late 70s early 80s it was still jobs there but if you was to go back in the time machine you could go to detroit in the late 40s early 50s detroit was one of the best places cities in the world to live in i mean everything was there it was moving super fast because there was so much money in that particular economy and same thing with flint that's a suburb of detroit it, but it was flint was not always a black city
Yeah, violence about to get even worse though. I mean, it's about to get stupid out here. You know what I'm saying? It's about to get dumb. I was gonna try to bring a guy out here for self defense, but he chilling. But yeah, violence about to get stupid out here in certain markets. It's about to get stupid because people not gonna have nothing. They ain't gonna have nothing. It's gonna be so expensive to live because violence in other parts of the world is crazy. You know, you look at Mexico; they've essentially, uh, you know, segmented that whole country into cartel groups. And these guys running through the city just knocking people off. And ain't nothing nobody can do about it because they got all the guns. Like, you're going to start seeing a lot more of that inside the United States. And I'm not an alarmist. I don't do that. But there's already cartel activity inside the United States. It's in Chicago. But they, the, 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 these political pundits and political entertainers presented it as black violence. It's not black violence. It's cartel violence. But we can't say that because we were trying to create a narrative around Obama. And many of them ain't going to say nothing about the cartels because they worried about the cartels doing something to them, which is why Trump talked about Chapo. And he had to clean that up when his people finally told him who Chapo really was in real life, not on the Internet. Who this dude really was in real life and what he commands in real life, even though he may be incarcerated. You see, Trump had to clean that up. So there's a lot of cartel violence going on in Chicago. In fact, the area of Chicago that has the most violence is not a black area. But the narrative they created around Chicago to try to make Obama look bad, well, this is black violence. It was cartel violence. And you're going to start seeing more of that inside this country because what the cartels have done in, in Mexico is they've totally destabilized that particular scenario. Right. They've destabilized that whole country, split that thing into different factions and they just do what they want to do. Because what is the Mexican government going to do about it? They're inefficient. They're ineffective. And you're going to see a lot more of that inside of the America. Because of the low end economy, you're gonna see a lot of cartel violence. And if you want to get a heads up of what it looks like, study the narco wars in Colombia in the 90s. Study those narco wars because I tell people the civil war in America is not gonna be conventional, it's not gonna be tanks and planes and all that stuff. So, a lot of our conventional soldiers they can't wrap their head around it. The, the cartel wars is. Mr. Clutch, we find out that Mr. Clutch is working with the government and we go kill his whole family. We don't ever get to Mr. Clutch. We just go kill his family. That's the cartel wars. Right. To let everybody know if you work with the government, your family is going to pay the price of it. So then what do you do? You scare people out of working with government. So then what? The cartel is not able to take more territory and exert more control over the particular land. That's what's coming. But instead of these people telling people, well, you know, what we see going on in, in, in Chicago is really cartel activity. They just talk about the numbers, but don't want to talk about what's really causing it. That's cartel activity. Google the Flores brothers and Google who they got their dope from. They now are they, they turn DEA informant. But who was they getting their dope from? Then Google where the Flores brothers are from. Where are they from? See, they don't talk about it. See, that's why they don't let me on their shows, because we're going to really get to the real heart of the issue. We're not going to play these little soundbite games because I don't appeal to that crowd. Right. I don't do politics or sports teams. I'm a Bucks fan. I'm not a fan of nobody else. I like the Bucks. Right. And the Bucks are not a political organization. So I'm not a fan of nothing else. So we don't do politics. And that's not how I'm trying to make money. So that's why I can't get on none of these shows. All of that activity in Chicago is cartel activity. It's not gang bangers. That's cartel activity. And it's actually been documented, but they can't talk about that. And you're going to see a lot more of that all over this country. Facts. It don't help you. And the problem is we're supposed to live through them. And Mr. Evan, I want to tell you is that we don't talk about dudes out of New York City like Reginald Lewis. We've made the black celebrity the standard of success. No disrespect to Jay-Z. I respect Jay-Z. Because his daughter's never going to have to work. In fact, his grandkids are never going to have to work. they never going to have to work. So I respect him for that. He's made sure that his grandkids never going to have to work a day in their life. But we made entertainers the standard of black economic success. And we ignore the black business people that have figured out how to do it at a very high level. Guys like Reginald Lewis out of New York City. Nobody talks about this guy. Jay-Z, no disrespect to him because he's been successful. But his success came out of music. Reginald Lewis was never an entertainer. He was never a pastor and he was never an academic. And we keep black people spinning around those three categories. You got to either be an academic slash intellectual. You got to be a pastor or you got to be an entertainer. That's how you're going to be accepted by the society. Then they position you in what lane, the conservative lane, the liberal lane, 
yada, yada, yada. They figure out what lane they're going to position you. But you'll see conservative commenters also trying to be pastors at the same time. Right. Or conservative intellectuals or liberal intellectuals also trying to be entertainers. I'm a I'm a I'm a liberal intellectual, but I'm going to make a rap album. Why? Why you want to make a rap album? Because I got to go into the entertainment lane now because that's the three lanes. Right. I'm a I'm a conservative intellectual. Then I got to try to do a rap album, too. So this is the type of stuff because they created these lanes for us and everybody got to try to figure out how to fit in one. So if you don't fit in one of them lanes, they don't have a place for you because you got to either be a pastor, an intellectual or an entertainer. And that's why to me, why we get a lot of this stuff. Facts. You're going to see it even more. Yeah, I believe that. I mean, we look at how much of uh, money laundering through banks, through financial institutions. I did a community post about the Jersey banks, a lot of these uh, banks in the Cayman Islands and stuff of that nature. They're laundering cartel money. Right. A big part of the banking system is money laundering for cartels. Right. So if they doing that, I guarantee they got politicians on payroll. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. You're gonna get privatized security. Facts. A lot of people don't know that though. See, a lot of people don't know that because they don't know that story. This is a group, this is a bunch of dudes out of Chicago. And this was going on in the early 2000s. This ain't something that happened last year. So this is how long Sinaloa has had a connection to Chicago, Illinois. But let them tell it is black gangs. But you know, and some of these people, they so lame to what's real life, they can never wrap their head around this because they don't know how it work outside. So they don't know who the Flores brothers are. They definitely they know who El Chapo is through entertainment, but they don't really know who that dude really is. Right. And they don't understand the situation really going on in Mexico, how essentially uh, that cold country has been destabilized, which is why you get so many Mexicans coming over here, because there's, you know, there's, there's essentially whole cities and whole towns with a cartel running and they just be going through there killing people. So I don't blame them people for leaving Mexico. Right. But people don't understand this, but they presented it because of Obama that Chicago was a city of black violence. What a city of cartel violence. Right. They don't want to tell that story, but I know who the Flores brothers are. I know exactly who they are and I know who they connect was. Right. I know that. And that and that just one on the dope game is a whole lot of other drugs they push in here. And I'm, I'm against drug prohibition because drug prohibition creates people like El Chapo. You get rid of prohibition, you don't have an El Chapo because there's no money in it. Appreciate it, sweet Melanie. Good book. Great book. They should make a movie about this guy, and they haven't. Should make a movie about this dude. Right? But they, they won't because this is a guy, that, a black man that operated at the highest level of capitalism in this country. Right? And he didn't do it being no sellout. Right? So we can't make a movie about this dude. He didn't do it entertaining people. He was no black intellectual and he definitely wasn't no pastor. He was about getting money. He really was a lawyer by trade. Right. But they should make a movie about this dude. But they're not going to do that. That ain't going to happen. Definitely Don Peoples. So, Ken Billions, I appreciate it. Uh, Excalibur, appreciate it. Uh, bro up in, in Newark, Julian Brown, I appreciate it, man. Definitely. Uh, you saw, um, I think it was J.P. Morgan. They had a boat they was controlling. It was like a ton of cocaine on the boat. I mean, just whatever. You know, they get fined a billion dollars for doing something illegal. That's the cost of doing business. But there's no way in the world that these financial institutions are not are not laundering drug money because it's too much money. Somebody got to be laundering that money. Got to go somewhere. But they're doing it through these overseas accounts, things of that nature. So it is what it is. Definitely. I try to tell people that about Miami. All that all that Cuban and Colombian dope money went into Miami, built that that uh that Miami skyline on the beach. Right. Black people was late to it. And because we don't know what to do with money, we spent and bought cars and clothes and, and jewelry. And they got nothing to show for all that dope we sold in the 80s. And we, but they let us sell dope after they made all the money selling dope. We can't talk about it either. We retailers. We don't get to wholesale it. And we definitely don't get to supply it. 
They get us the retailer. We the sales team for it. But you got to really know the game to even know that. Right. We impressed by retailers. Right. That's what impresses us. How much you can retail. I ain't mad at you having a retail outfit. But there's levels to that game. Right. When they going to let us hold. Why come they never let us wholesale it? Or be the distributor like like Chapo. They distributors, they traffickers. We just got to stand outside and sell it. Right. They don't let us come in on different levels. So it's racism in every game. But we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Or, you know, they'll do something to you. Appreciate it, Dre. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, I told people before that Goldman Sachs will sell you a product. And as soon as you buy it, they trade against it. Just like with those mortgage backed securities. Once a lot of and I told told people this with uh, I told people to watch. I told all my traders uh, to watch uh, margin call with those mortgage backed securities or MBSs. Well, once they realized that they were too rich to be on a the portfolio, they sold them and then traded against them. So what Goldman did was sold the MBSs and then created default swaps. They trade against the MBS that they knew was going to really fall off because they knew it was risky. Right. But it's, it's you know, it's making money. It's all about making money. So you find them one hundred million dollars. Come on, man. You talking about an outfit that does billions of dollars a quarter. That one hundred million ain't no money to them. That's money to us because we don't know what money is. Right. So we you know, I'm going to talk about dudes talking about. A thousand a day trading to them, that's a thousand a day. I can't believe you said that. Because you used to making money every two weeks. You used to making, you know, we, we think a quarter million dollars a, 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 you know, a year is money. Half a million dollars a year is money. Let me explain something to you, man. Uh, I know prop traders. Now, we're not talking about the big trading outfits, the Goldman's, the JP Morgan's, you know, the big hedge funds. I know prop traders, guys that run independent trading firms that have a small cloud portfolio. They wouldn't cross the street for a thousand dollars a day trading. They wouldn't cross the street for that. So our perception of what money is is so low that we think making a thousand dollars a day is an obscene number because of how we've been conditioned in the richest country in the world. The richest country the world has ever produced that we made rich. So this is how disconnected we are from reality. We're the reason why this is the richest country in the history of the world. And we're also the group that has the least appreciation of money and capital. We don't believe it. It got to be real because we did it. We like a team that won the Super Bowl that don't believe they can win a game. Well, how y'all won the Super Bowl? Yo. It's like we're so disconnected from reality in this particular regard because of how we've been socialized. We made this the richest country in the history of the world, and we got the least understanding of how to make money and what kind of money can be made in this particular economy. A thousand dollars a day, that that shouldn't even be like, how is that intimidating to you? Because it's a grand? That's not even no money. Not in America. That's money in another. That's not even no money in America. We're talking about a stock market got an eighty trillion dollar market cap. We talking about a thousand dollars a day. But we're gonna go into that on Saturday. A lot of it is conditioning, and you got people from other parts of the world where you know people is lucky to make two hundred dollars a year trying to bring that condition into us. And I'm not going for that. That's y'all over there. Y'all let them people rob y'all. I'm not for it. You got people from other parts of the world, man, where the whole foreigners have been coming over there for years, robbing them, taking all their wealth. Not, I'm not for that over here. That's them. Y'all keep that over there. Uh, Mr. Clutch, the cash shop is scrolling on the bottom. Definitely. Right. And since everybody, everybody's so much from the streets and all that, like they say on the Internet, when I was coming up, I knew dudes was making 10 grand in about three or four hours when there was that much money on the street. They was making 10 grand about three or four hours. So it's you got to understand. We don't understand liquidity and where the money's really at. Right. But I know guys that run prop firms. Where if all they knew they was going to make was a thousand dollars a day, they wouldn't even get out of bed. I know a guy I follow on Instagram. He runs a prop firm in Puerto Rico. He lost 50,000 last month. That's how much he lost. He lost that. Still trading. 
he'll have another month, he'll make a quarter million dollars profit. Right? That's not, but like I said, is you're dealing with people where their job is a play to your mediocrity. Just because somebody sets a goal, it don't mean you're going to hit it. you got to set a goal. If I'm running a sales team, I'm going to tell the sales team, we got to drive this much per day in sales every day. If you can't do that, you don't need to be in those on this sales team. Because I'm not, I'm not having you come in here every day and go through the motions. We got to be driving sales. When I worked in retail, I used to work in a shoe store. We had a sales quota we had to hit every day. If we didn't hit that sales quota, our manager would not close the store. Because he didn't want the data to go back to the headquarters and we wouldn't hit sales quota. So we would stay open sometimes an extra hour to hit that sales quota. But when you have people that have not been put on a performance standards in their job, they don't understand that. They think work is I show up, I do what I do when I go home. Not I got to produce at a certain level for me to even stay in this environment. Right. And if I can't produce at a certain level, I got to go somewhere else. That's that's just that's abnormal to them. But that's what having a business is about. Right. If you got a business, you should have sales numbers that you're trying to hit every month. So this is what I'm saying is a lot of these people are playing to our mediocrity and our, our anxiety and our fear and making it seem like they are friend. But in reality, the way you acting, you really my enemy because you making me accept less as a way of protecting me. But in reality, you really hurting me. Well, feel you. Well, you ain't got to do what you're not comfortable doing. Well, that's one way to start because I only I only tell people two K a month. I don't tell people one K a day because I don't want to scare them because I know how our people think. I know a guy that does futures trading. He was at one time showing people that he was making six and seven thousand dollars a day. He had a marketer tell him. Stop showing people that because they can't wrap their head around a brother that got from New Jersey, a black man that looked like you, that talk with a regular voice, that wear regular clothes is pulling six and seven grand a day out of the market. So they won't deal with you because in their mind, they can't wrap their head around that because we still think because of our conditioning, the only people supposed to have money is athletes, entertainers and street people. So our entertainers try to present themselves like street people and the athletes try to act like they entertainers because we think these only people supposed to have money. So a guy sitting at his computer who understands the futures market doing six and seven thousand a day, he had a marketer to tell him. And when you're dealing with this audience, you can't show them that you got to bring your money down, you know, as far as what you're showing them, what you're making, because they're not going to uh, that's not going to appeal to them because they can't wrap their head around. It. We got to have a different conversation about money. Is that calcification of wealth? Yes. But let me explain something to you. If you don't understand what kind of money actually exists in this economy. You don't even know that you're supposed to advocate for the money. So we're telling people to advocate for money that they don't even know exists in this economy. So they don't they don't believe it even exists. So they attitudes, why should I advocate for it? I don't believe it exists. We know it exists because Biden just gave a group of people a gang of money. So the money does exist, but we don't even know it exists. So then we don't know to advocate for the bread because we don't believe it's out there. These people can write a check for as much money as possible. Why they done done it before? They can write a trillion dollar check if that's what they want to do. The man told you on television, if we want to make money, we just go into a computer and we put zeros and ones on the ledgers. And that's how much money we make. He never said we got to physically print the money so they can make as much money as they want to make. That don't matter. We've been constrained by stuff that's not even a constraint. We've been constrained by stuff that's not even a constraint. Chris, you just got to apply yourself. But first, you got to one, get to 200 a day, then 300 a day. It's the same way in business. People want to make 10 grand a month in business. Well, you got to make a thousand a month first. Right. Make a thousand a month in business first, then make, you know, five thousand, then make ten. But what a lot of people want to do is they want to come into a business with no experience, no training. And go from making zero to ten grand. And if it don't work, oh, well, you know, it don't work. It's fake. It's a, it's, it's a scam. Well, you got to build the business up and then you got to understand that in business, you might make 10 grand this month. Next next month, you might make three. Next month, you might make 14. That's how businesses work. We're going to talk about it a little later. A business that's they're not driving the same amount of revenue that they drove last year. That's why their share price is falling. That's the nature of business. But you got to people got to build themselves up so they hear about income potential. And in their mind, 
Well, if I don't make that in 90 days, it don't work. But you went to college for four years and make $50,000 a year. So I don't understand, but you really didn't go to college to make 50 grand. You really went to college for status. So I get it now because most people don't go to college to make money. They really go for status. Right. So they come out of college with no understanding of how to make money. They're not mad. But when you sell them an opportunity to make money and it don't work, their attitude as well. It didn't work because I didn't get it in the amount of time I anticipated getting it in. Right. So what we maybe need to start doing is not selling money, selling status like the college. Right. You, you know, you'll be important if you just take this by this course. Right. As opposed to trying to uh, get them to buy into the income potential. You'll be important if you buy this course because they just want to buy status, which is why they buy designer and they buy cars and, you know, shoes and all that because they want the status. They don't really want the item. That's maybe how we got to reconfigure it, because when it comes to income. We think, well, you know, what? if I don't hit it like that, it don't work. That's just, you know, that's just how we think. But most of us don't want money. I'm 100. You can't convince me that most black people want money. Most of people don't want money. Right. They don't really want it in, a, in an economy that's flush with money in the richest country in the world. So we can't advocate for reparations because we don't really want we don't understand how much money actually exists Two, We don't really want it. We don't really want it. So we, we don't advocate for it. Right. We, we don't we don't advocate for it. what we really want is to be able to buy stuff. But we don't want reparations. We just want to buy. We want to consume. So we got any coin? We got any last questions before we get up on out of here? Because like I said, I'm gonna roll into this next video. But I appreciate everybody coming through. Uh, Mr. Clutch, appreciate for the cash out. Appreciate everybody that donated. And I want to go ahead and wrap this up real quick before we get up on out of here. <clears throat> you got to get some skills in 2022, right? Whatever, regardless of whether or not you do what I'm talking about, you got to get some skills. Uh, this economy is not gonna get easy. It's gonna get harder. You're dealing with a population of people that don't really know what money is, uh, and they also don't want money so if you want to be financially successful you're going to be by yourself a lot because a lot of white people don't want money either you know it's the reason why the income is where it's at in this country because most people don't really want it so what it means is that they're not competing for it so there's more for the people that actually want it right and that's just how resource control works even though money's not a resource it's a tool but it's used to get resources so you just got to decide what you really want and understand that if you don't have the skills in this new economy in real life, not on the Internet, but in real life, you're going to have to take a deal. And whatever the deal you're going to have to take, that's just the deal you're going to have to deal with. All of this, you a standalone autonomous unit. You so independent. You do everything by yourself. That's not going to work. You're going to be a victim out here. Right. Because people going to see that about you. They're going to come after you. Uh, all this going back and forth between people on the Internet thinking that's going to benefit your situation. You can use it as an avatar for your frustration. But as this economy starts to go down and things get tougher and tougher on you, you know, it's going to be tough on you, you know, but if that's what you invested in, I hope you get a return on that. So I appreciate everybody coming through. Don't want to ramble. We at 118. This is David W. Williams, also known as Diamond Dave. Talk to you later.